my name is Maurice Washington. I want to welcome everybody to another episode of Executive Talk. Those that are here live in our studio audience, thank you guys for attending, and also those that are watching us live. In today's show, we're talking about our once a month segment, which is called What is Your Business Struggle? Now, for those that are first time with Executive Talk, our job is to make sure that we bring you all the information that you can along your business journey to help you along. And what is your business uh, struggle? Um, I, we have Executive Talk has brought Nancy Gaines, owner and operator of Gaines Advantage Incorporated. She's a productivity coach here in the, I'm sorry, productivity expert here in the Denver Marketplace. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and welcome Nancy. How are you doing, Nancy? Hi, Maurice. So glad to be back. Thanks for being here. Uh, if you can do us a favor for those that are first time, just introduce yourself and tell us who you are. And, Give a little background. Excellent. I'm Nancy Gaines, CEO and founder of Gain Advantages. It's a business coaching company, and my team and I help companies have more structure and systems so they have more free time and make more profits. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Today's topic is introduction to systems. How many people are familiar with systems? By a show, raise a hand. Absolutely. So this show is not to, inter not to insult your intelligence. We know that you guys as business owners know about systems. But what we're, what we're actually trying to achieve in our resolution by the end of the show is reintroduce the value of systems. First and foremost, what I want to do is I want to go over the definition of systems and what it actually means. So systems is a, a set of things working together as parts of a mechanism or interconnecting network in order to get something done. So again, let's read that definition one more time. A set of things working together as parts of a mechanism or interconnecting network. The, the keys that I want you guys to pay attention to are working together and also interconnecting network. And we'll bring that up later on in our conversation. So first and foremost, where are systems found? They're found in your marketing. They're found in your follow-up. They're found in your email, your website, your phone call, networking, the time you get to work, the time you leave, the money, team. Systems are in everything. Would you guys agree to that? Okay. The fact that you, when you woke up, you have a system in which you, you know, start your morning off with. So <laughs> everybody's accustomed to what a system is and the effect of it. So if we all know what systems are, why do business owners reject systems? So in order to really get a mindset around this, what I would like to do is remind you of the fact that when you're a W-2, when you used to work for a company, you were part of a system. That particular area of that company that you work for, so let's say you work for the marketing department, that marketing department is the marketing system of the company, okay? And that is part of one of the interconnecting systems that it works, works through and things working together. So if you have a marketing department and a customer service department, what if they communicate to, with each other? That's where the systems are working together in order for the common goal of the company. So when you're a W-2, and the reason why you left you say, you know what, I want my own freedom. I want to do what I want to do, right? You guys remember that, that particular statement, that mindset? Now, when you go that, when you go to your, you know, you become a business owner, what's the, what's the thing that you reject? You don't like feeling controlled. That's the reason why you left. That's, that's what that statement meant. You did not like being controlled. Now, when you're a W-2, one thing that you hate it is every time I come to work, I press enter, I got to turn on, I got to work from nine to, f nine to four, then I have to take a break from 12 to one. You know, you, it, was, it was mundane, it was boring. Now, when you became a business owner, you say, you know what, this is gonna be a lot more fun because I, I can go and sell and I can go and do what I wanna do. When you're a W-2, remember, it provided with that system that you're working, depending on what your frequency of pay was, so let's say you got every two weeks. So every two weeks, because you're working that system, you, you got a reward. And that reward was that paycheck in working that system. But now, as a business owner, it doesn't provide revenue right away, does it? You're not, not really for sure, but it does, it does not um, provide revenue right away. Okay, when you're a W-2, it wasn't silent because you're working together. You're working with a couple of different departments in order to get the job done. Now, as a business owner, as a solopreneur, it's just your company, it becomes very silent. You don't know if it's working or not. You have no clue. Okay, every day you're just hoping. You feel like you're, you know, as a business owner, you feel like you're exempt. When you're a W-2, you knew that if you didn't work that particular system every day from that time to that time, you could possibly get fired. But now as a business owner, only you can fire you, so 
you know, if you don't work the system today, it doesn't matter. It compromises your mindset. Let's think about it for a minute. In your mind, every day, you, you know specifically, I have to do these things in order to make my business run. But then if you have these things on the other side of your brain saying, you know, I'm exempt, I don't need to do it. It's silent. I, I can't even tell if it's working or not. It doesn't provide revenue right now. It's boring. Feeling it controlled again. If you, if you have this weight over here haunting you every day and then this part is saying, yeah, you need to do it anyway, it's very easy to reject doing a system. Now, what values do you need in order to maintain a system? And this is something that Nancy has seen over and over again, I think, in her business, where LinkedIn is one of those systems. Okay, social media has a lot of systems, and LinkedIn is a very professional, it's supposed to be that professional system that business owners can rely on. Now, what do you find as a common theme within LinkedIn when it comes to business professionals? People definitely connect with people, and that's it. It's one and done. They don't follow up and continue to build that relationship, which is a system, right, Maurice? Absolutely, absolutely. It is an absolute system that can actually, actually absolutely work for you. But let's say everybody that's in this room, let's say only two people worked the system of LinkedIn, which means that you uh, follow up, you try to set some one-to-ones, you have a group, you've interacted in the groups, you posted um, blogs into the groups, you posted videos into your page, you did all these things constantly, consistently. Now, let's say four, four people in here did not work the system. That actually affects the interaction that LinkedIn, or actually the, the value that it, LinkedIn actually provides. Because not everybody is working the system, so you think it doesn't work. So in order to work a system, you have to be completely honest about your part. Are you absolutely doing that part every single day regardless? Okay, if the system has groups, if the system has a place where you can blog and everything of that nature, are you using it to its full capacity? If no, then you truly haven't worked that system completely. Value above results. If you work the system, see a system requires value first above results. Because again, you don't really know, you may not get immediate interaction based on the system that you're working in this particular moment. If you do results before val value, Again, it goes quick. If, if you don't see results after a couple of days, what do you do? Doesn't work, gotta go. Okay, so that's what happens when those two are reversed. Consistency, just like anything else, consistency just happens to be in every single parts of our lives. So consistency is another thing to maintain that system. So what happens to your mindset when you stop working a system? Now on the, on the scale of one to 10, Nancy, do you feel like people are excited about doing, doing systems on a regular basis, especially the marketing system. 10 being not excited at all, one being, actually one being not excited at all, 10 being completely excited. They start on the lower end, Maurice, and then as they put the systems in and they see the results, then they move up toward the 10, but initially I do get some pushback. Okay, all right. And that, that seems a, as a common theme, correct? So think about this, the power of the like, and I'm gonna bring you guys back to Facebook. You know, when we were a kid, when we were kids, it used to be very important for us to, you know, do my friends like me? I want to be liked and so on and so forth. Now as adults, we said, nah, it doesn't matter. But then now you're a business owner. Now let's say you post something on Facebook. Have you ever found yourself going back to check to see if anybody liked it? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the power of the like has re been reintroduced into your life. It's part of your system now. So think about it, a marketing system. This is, your, this is your value statement right here. I'm gonna market my business, I'm gonna post something once a week on Facebook. So that's what you do for the first four weeks. Now, on the third week, what happens? You finally get that like, but it's from your cousin Melvin that lives in Indiana and doesn't have a business. So you're like, well, that doesn't really count. Okay, nobody's paying attention. So what's the mind trail that happens to you? No one's responding. And then you start selling yourself on why you don't need to do it, right? So look at this little hash mark right here. That's actually your mindset. You're, you're, in a, you're, in a, you're in a state of change right there. You can either stay on the once a week and stay on the value system, or you're gonna change to the three weeks. But typically we go to the three weeks. Well, maybe it's because I'm posting too much. Well, because I'm posting too much, I'll do it once every three weeks and then that'll be sufficient enough. Then you really don't see any interaction. Then what happens? No one's responding to this either. I don't need to do it this frequently. I'll do it once a month. 
I promise, once a month works. Once a month, no, no interaction. You know what, every three months is gonna be every once a quarter. I got it, that's it. Then what happens? Now you leave it completely alone. That is the trail of business owner. Now, that's actually being gentle. Typically it goes once a week to leave it completely alone. You know how we are as business owners. That's just some, some, of, our, some of our things. But have you ever saw a post uh, on Facebook, on your news feed, and said, oh yeah, I forgot about them. Have you, have you guys ever did that before? That, is that, that sign, that statement right there shows that a person has stopped the system and started it over again. Then you actually, what, what do you happen to do? You happen to go look at their feed and say, oh, what are they doing? You go look at their profile, you follow up for a little bit, and then you're off again. But then if they don't stay consistent, then you forget about it, and that's that top of mind awareness. And the worst thing about this particular process and that, oh yeah, I forgot about them, with the way that capitalism works, if there's 20 real estate agents to one person, you're, you're depending a lot on loyalty for that person to remember to use you. So let's say somebody else is working their systems and they happen to meet you and you, have, you stopped doing your marketing and they earn that business. Well, if you had maintained that marketing, you would have been that top of mind awareness, awareness that would have helped um, tap into that value that's, that that relationship has. So that's why we have to constantly work that marketing system. Now, systems mentally versus emotionally. This is an example that happened to me at a networking, I went to a networking event. Um, there's a gal that I'd known for, I don't know, maybe about four or five years, we haven't seen each other for three. So the, you know how the conversation goes, hey, how you doing, nice to see you, nice to see you, hey, you look great, I love your hair, hey, Maurice, you're still bald. You're still bald. So that's where our conversation went. Now fast forwarding to business, what have you been up to? She said, well, you know, I've been going through a lot of change. Now that question, what have you been up to, what does that mean? That means her, her marketing system has been completely non-existent. I don't even know what she's doing nowadays. Now, firstly, she said, oh, I've been seeing your post. How is everything going with? That statement, because she's been seeing the consistency in the marketing system. Now, I did not know that she's been seeing it because she never, interact, she never liked any of the posts. But her statement to me was, you know, I've been seeing it, I just haven't taken the time to sit and watch. So that told me, so mentally, so when you, when you work systems with your mind only and perception, I could have looked at that at that moment and say, nobody's paying attention. But they are paying attention, it's just the action hasn't taken effect on that end. Now that clock is against you. And that, in that example that we did earlier, if you have not, if you're doing it with your eyes, Okay, I haven't got a like, I haven't got interactions, I see low impressions, then that means I'm gonna start tapping out and I'm gonna say, you know what, I'm not gonna do this anymore. But when you work systems emotionally, you stay consistent. Because I'm doing it based off of integrity. I don't know who's watching, I don't care if people are disconnecting, but I said this, this company needs to market once a week, every single, every single week. That's a value-based marketing system and I can stay consistent with that. Then I can, then I can hold myself accountable. What are you doing? Why are you, not, why are you not marketing this week? Go back and make sure you do what you need to do. Systems provide clarity in the following areas. Time management. In order to actually understand how your time works for that day, you have to allow, uh, allow uh, an hour for something specific. Now the project may be 20 minutes, but maybe 40 minutes to work the system in order to get that project complete. So that's where that hour comes from. So that's where your time management is complete. Your project management. You can't effectively tell somebody, I need your help in this area without a system in place. Systems make your business name move forward. The name is so valuable. You can go on the state, go and register your business name on the state of Colorado, have all of it done, and not work a day. Is your, na is your business name effective? No. It's effective based on the IRS. They know that you're out there bank accounts, you get mail saying, hey, open up a checking account with us. You know, you feel good. But as far as the systems make your business live, as soon as you stop your systems, your business name doesn't move forward. The reason why you have conversations about other companies, hey, have you heard of XYZ company? Because they've done extremely good branding up until the point where now you're talking for them. That's what that conversation piece and that's the power of that system. It, 
created a conversation outside of them. So their name is working at seven o'clock at night when they close the doors at five o'clock. Without systems, your name stays dormant. So those are some of the concepts and ideas that I want you guys to really, again, reintroduce the value of the systems. And Nancy's gonna take you from here and give us some uh, implementation uh, tools. Thanks, Maurice. All right. So Maurice gave you the Webster definition of systems, right? I'm gonna give you a very practical one so you can put the two of them together. Systems is actually an acronym, and it stands for save yourself some time, energy, and money. Pretty good, huh? Mm -hmm. Did you know that nine out of 10 problems in your business can be solved with systems, Maurice? That sounds, that sounds very true. It's a great, 90% yes. of Absolutely. it can be solved with a system. <laughs> so systems, they just automate things. Anything you do more than two times should have a system. It should be repeatable every time. Anything you do more than three times should be automated. So you can set it and forget it. So let's move on to the next slide and talk about why systemize. You've touched on this a bit. I talked about how it automates things. You can set it and forget it. Have you ever been in networking, Maurice, where you're listening to the speaker and the person next to you is like typing away mm, yes. and they're probably not texting their friend? <laughs> right. They're probably dealing with something back at the office, sure. right? It's because they don't have systems in place to run it so that they can actually take time off to learn something or come to the TV show like all of you or those watching live. The great thing about mm. systems is they're consistent. Yes. They work every single time. I know pilots that have been in business 20 years and they still follow that flight checklist. <laughs> That's right. We're That's glad right. they do, right? <laughs> That's right. They know what to do, but having that checklist, that system, it just ensures all of our safety. It reduces human interaction. You don't need as many people, so you save money. You can automate stuff with technology and you don't have to hire an employee and deal with drama or sick time or all of that stuff. <laughs> You can scale and eventually sell your company. Most businesses should be set up to be sold in five years. Whether you do or not, you should remove yourself. It should be systemized so that it can be bought by somebody else and run turnkey. Hmm. And the last thing is it gives you time away and freedom. So you can take vacation, go <laughs> yes. play basketball. Go That's play one basketball. of yours. That's right. <laughs> go for a walk. We live in Colorado. You can hike. So systems are great. So let's move on to the next slide. Okay. So here are some different systems that you need. You need systems for your money, how you pay your people, okay. your accounts receivable, your accounts payable, even your expense reimbursement. Yes. All of that should be systemized. You, uh, you don't want to go to the bank and bring a bunch of checks, right, Maurice? <laughs> no, I sure don't. <laughs> you want PayPal where it just shows up, you hear that you've got money. you got money, that's right. You use something like that right now? I do, I do. I think that's uh, valuable because, yes, going to the bank and actually setting up time to actually go to the bank and do do that is, is, I don't have the time to do that. Right. So yeah, to automate it, that is perfect. And it's easier for your customers because they just click a button, they pay one and done. They don't even have time to rethink, should I really buy this? It's mm. just a sale. You know what I'm talking about? That's it. The second That's area, it. sales, product launches, fulfillment, even a sales script, that is a system. Every time you pick up the phone, what exactly do you say to move them from where they are to where you want them to go? Absolutely. There's marketing, lead generation. We've got some social media people with us today. Your, your press releases, your internet, even your networking. Yes. So I'm gonna give you a tip today on networking. So you wanna <laughs> write this down. Have you ever heard of 24 7 30? I have not. Can I tell you about that? Please do. 24 is the first number. Within meeting somebody new, within 24 hours, go connect on social media. It's the fastest thing you can do. Whatever your social media is, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, go connect with that person. Within seven days, you want to send them an email. Mm, okay, seven days. Seven days, some okay. sort of personal email, and I'll give you a template for that. Three parts. One, remind them. We met at the Maurice Executive Talk, Where Are You Struggling <laughs> segment. <laughs> Mention something personable that you talked about. For example, we talked a little bit about networking. Yeah. We talked about networking. Give them something of value. For example, I just read this article on networking. Here's a link to it. And then the third part is invite. Invite them to have a coffee nice. or a conversation by phone, some way to follow up. So 24, connect on social media. Seven, send a personalized email. Okay. And then 30, every 30 days you want to follow up until that person becomes a sale. That's a good deal. Yeah, only 2% yeah, like of the people are ready to buy when you meet them, 2%. That's a small percentage, yeah. They <laughs> buy over time, so they have to think about that. The other systems are people how you interview people for your team. If you mm. have a set list of questions, so you ask everybody every single time, you won't get hit with discrimination. You know it's you're comparing apples to apples. So an interviewing script system, 
onboarding, mm. even vacation policies, that should be a system. They need to tell you a couple days ahead of time versus just leaving. Right. And then the last one is operations. Yes. You need yeah. to have systems for your planning, how you run meetings, even your inventory. Do you have a special system out of these five, Maurice, that you just really, really like? You know, the one that I like the, the best is marketing. And that's the one that, uh, because when you do the internet, when you do the networking, the 24, 7, 30, that is something I pride myself on. You know, if there's something I really pay, pay attention to is that, because that one seems to go to waste pretty quick, so. The money's in the follow-up, right? Yes, that's it. How many times have you ever taken a bunch of business cards? I used to do this. I had a client, before she worked with me, she'd come home and she'd have a stack of business cards intending to reach out to people. They'd sit on her desk. Days would go by, weeks. All of a sudden, she's in the next month and she's like, this is kind of embarrassing. I don't remember these people. What am I going to say? And so they all get shuffed off into the the uh, circular trash can. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and she could have had a lot of business. After working with me, she did 24, 7, 30, and now her sales are just off the, mm. off the chart. It's great. So those are some systems to share about. I think we've got time for some audience questions. Yeah, I think we do. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can ask one. Uh, does anybody have any questions for us today? All right. Hello. Hello, sir. Thank you for attending the Executive Talk Show. How can we help you today? Hi, uh, I'm Theron. You talk about uh, systems that have to go across boundaries. Uh, if I'm a salesperson in a company and I have my contact system, but my company wants those contacts for their business they're doing, but when I leave the company, I'd like to take that with me. Could you talk about how systems you know, interplay there and, and how that would uh, you know, benefit everybody if it was a better system for doing that? Interesting. You want me to take that one? Sure. So the first thing I would make sure is you're abiding by all the uh, non-compete because some companies let you take them, some people's don't. The other thing is what has worked for me and my clients is getting some sort of CRM system, a customer relationship management system, or even a customer contact system, and saving all that information in one place so it's very easy to, to um, follow, you can mark your follow-ups every 30 days, you can send reminders, you've got it all in one place so it's very portable. But first, for sure, you wanna talk with your company to make sure you're not violating any agreements. And then making sure they're going to give it, give me my data back when I leave. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Let's actually go to the, some of our email questions that we had. Okay. Um, so we'll have you take the first one. What is your routine for your online marketing? So I am very, I like to chunk activities together, meaning work on one thing that's related. I don't like to go for coffee and then come home and then write a blog. And it's just very distracting because mm. I live in the mountains. So it wastes time. <laughs> yeah. What I do is every Monday, I create, I create a blog and I post it to LinkedIn. Every Wednesday, I record my podcast, which is downloaded in over 56 countries awesome. already. Awesome. Yeah, I just hit that. High five. Go ahead, go. <laughs> that one goes out on Wednesday. <laughs> okay. And then I do a newsletter once a month. So just a real simple system, but I know, oh, it's Monday, I have to go do this. Yes. How about you? Do you have a system? Yeah, my system is every Tuesday. That's when I do my YouTube follow-up. That's when I do all my posting via LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, so on and so forth. So that's my system that I, 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 I stick to is on Tuesdays is my day to do all my marketing. So. so I think the bottom line is just pick a day where you do something and that is the day you do something. And don't try to say, well, I'll get to that later in the week because we know what we, do, what we don't do now doesn't happen, right? That's exactly it. That's exactly it. I'm gonna take the second question here. At the start of your business, what did you have to change in order for you to become consistent with your own systems? So, first and foremost, at the start of my business, um, I was very arrogant, to, to be honest with you guys. <laughs> and that arrogance was, I'm a business owner, I don't have to be responsible, you know, I can just go for the sale. Because that's what they teach you in business, go for the sale, go for the sale, go make sure you deliver the product and go for another sale. And so that was a level, that, that was a system, but it was an arrogant system. There's a lot of arrogance within that system. So what I had to really think about is, I had to think about my words, is customer service a value to me? Am I doing things the way that I would want somebody else to do it to me? So the answer was no. So what I needed to do in order to be consistent is stop that level of arrogance and that when I stopped that arrogance, actually consistency started to find its way in because I did off of value first versus the, the, the sale of it all. So that's what, that's what helped me. What about you? Mine, wow. So write this down. 
H A B U. H A B U. It stands for highest and best use of time. So, Maurice, when I started my business, I was trying to do it all to save money. So, I made a GoDaddy website. Okay. I'm a little embarrassed <laughs> to even tell you the URL. It was, um, <laughs> it was, it was messy, and okay. I tried to do my own social media, and I just tried to do everything by myself. And I realized that is not my skill. I need to go either. Uh, trade services with somebody or hire somebody to get work done because it was not the highest and best use of my time. I'm good at the productivity and systems and client facing and that's where I needed to be. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I, uh, if I had a do-over, a mulligan, I would have outsourced from the beginning. Gotcha. Okay. Do you have any final thoughts with this? Oh, a good final thought. If you're not using systems, you are leaving money on the table. You're not doing the highest and best use of your time. So I challenge everybody here in our live audience and watching us and even the replays, go systemize one thing. You don't have to systemize it all. Just pick one thing and systemize it. And when that's done, go do another one and another. And eventually, everything's systemized and your business is on autopilot. How about you? So, you know, my final thought for everybody is, if you find yourself struggling with systems, take a weekend, take a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and think. Just, just take the whole weekend off. Don't go to your normal traveling session, whatever you do on the weekends. Take it completely off and think. Think why you're not doing these systems. First and foremost, yes, it's probably tedious, but why? If we're saying that we want to provide the best cu customer service, if you know that there's other companies out here that are trying to fight for the same client that you're working with, is that going to affect you long term? And if longevity is part of your business, is systems a value to you? If it is, it's a great time. I don't care if it's December 15th. That is a great time to start over and start your systems over and just block out your schedule for the following week. Give yourself some time to, you know what? This week, I'm going to be systematic. I'm going to start this Monday to do every, I'm going to do all my marketing. I'm going to do 10 follow-up calls a, a day. Then make sure that you're doing that. Be accountable to yourself. So that's what I would say as far as systems. That's something I needed to do, and I'm just sharing some of the things I needed to do for myself with you guys. I hope that helps. So again, thank you, Nancy, for your um, information. It was valuable. I'm sure the audience and everybody that was watching really um, got something from here. I would like to invite everybody to follow up on the conversation here on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and also on YouTube for future shows and but in the meantime Nancy and I we have to get back to work so you guys have a good day thank you Nancy thanks Maurice all right